So we continue our conversation. Last week, we started talking about faith and finance. And we established the fact that in God's kingdom, there are rules. And God is the one who teaches us his ways. It's not something that you stumble on. It is something that you are taught. And that's why you show up in church, you show up in Sunday school, you show up midweek service, you are learning the nitty-gritty of the kingdom of God. Church should not be relegated to Sunday, Sunday. I'm sorry, you cannot maximize your options in the kingdom if you don't know about the kingdom. So scripture remains our constitution in God's kingdom. Remains our constitution. So if you understand the principles, you will be able to work it. The Bible says that he made his ways known to Moses and its act to the children of Israel. So Moses knew how to produce the miracles. And the children of Israel knows how to consume the miracles. And that's what I see happening in church today. We are only after the table that has been set. Who prepared the table, we don't even know. And we're not interested. God can make you a preparer of the table. God can use you as a deliverer from any generation. That's the problem. So today I'll be talking about what I've titled Generating Idea. Generating an idea. Now, I'm not saying generating ideas. I'm saying generating an idea. So we use an anchor scripture. 3 John chapter 3. 3 John chapter 1. Verses 2, verse 2 to 4. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. And last week we established um, that it is possible for a person to be blessed as far as God is concerned, um, spiritually, but they may not have experienced the physical manifestation of that blessing. Okay? It's possible. So what we're saying, according to that scripture, is that you, you're, you're spiritually blessed already. Now manifest it in the physical. Manifest it in the physical. So today, generating an idea, let me first establish the fact that human philosophy, ideology, and traditions cannot take precedence over that of the kingdom of God. They cannot. They cannot. Human philosophy, human ideology, human being will never be able to run a perfect system. Never. They will never be able to. So if there is this genius, very brilliant philosopher who came up with theories and laws and principles, no matter how good this person is, he cannot be as good as the Holy Spirit. His principles and his philosophies cannot be more powerful than the word of God. That's what I'm saying. No matter how, he cannot. So the problem is most, many of us have submitted our minds to those idle philosophies and ideologies, unprofitable quotations, Unprofitable motivation. <laughs> now I see Buddha, Buddha on Christian, Christian, Christian WhatsApp status. Buddha quotation, Buddha quotation. In fact, sometimes side by side with the scripture of God, with the word, with the word of God, because Buddha is very motivational. And so Christians doing yoga. And then <laughs> you, are not, you are not reciting or meditating on scriptures. When they do yoga, they do incantation, just in case you don't know. Christians signing up and submitting their mind to zodiac signs, horoscope, <laughs> Vigo, Pisces, Aries, Capri Sun, <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous thing to be. It's a dangerous thing to do. 
submitting your mind to those things. There's so many quotations now. People are looking for motivation. They're not looking for inspiration. Second, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says, beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty defeat. According to the tradition of men, it's there in the scriptures. According to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Beware, be careful. You say it in the Bible. Am I saying that they don't make sense? They make sense. But the truth is, when they enter into your mind, they enter into your life. But there's an inspiration behind it. It's not from God. Bible called them unprofitable. Idle. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Having their understanding darkened, because that's what eventually happens. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Bible says, verse 19, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. So there's an unbeliever in your office. Who is doing all the motivation. You too, you are doing motivation. What's the, what's the difference? What's the difference? How is your result going to be different? It's because you are not a believer. You don't believe the scriptures. That's why. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life, life, life to them who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. He said they are life to those who find them. This is Solomon, the wisest man before Jesus, saying, pay attention to these words. It will change the dynamics of your life forever. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Mark 7, 13. The Bible says, making the word of God of no effect through their tradition which you have handed, which you have handed down. And many such things you do. Wow. So Jesus is saying here that culture and tradition is powerful enough to frustrate the word of God. Making the word of God of no effect. Don't submit your mind to those ideologies. That's why the Bible says we should renew our mind consistently and continuously. So there's this saying that you cannot make money without money. You cannot make money without being corrupt. You cannot, they, all these, 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 ideologies and philosophies that are not consistent with scriptures, if you believe them, it will be our realities. That's what scripture say. Be careful what you believe, what you submit your mind to. I take um, the tennis coaching um, classes. And one of the things my, my coach will do, he will teach me some techniques. And then after the technique, he will have, ask me to practice. So we now play a game. While we're practicing, it's very nice. He'll be telling you, good, pastor, great. That's it, that's it, good. When we play a game, I switch back to default. Say, pastor, I taught you now. No verse, how I was supposed to do it like this. Say, hey, then we'll try it again. And then back to default. That's the problem. We are always going back to autopilot. So we hear one word in church now. We are inspired. By the time you greet two, three, four, five persons, <laughs> it has evaporated. That's why the Bible says that it's Satan that steals the word in the heart of people. It's so difficult to keep to that consistency. 
I have told you before. Practice is required in the kingdom. It's the practice of righteousness. That's why I said, renew your mind. It was not the Holy Spirit that the Bible says will do it for you. Be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. That's the work. That's the work. If you follow the principle, my golf, my, my golf coach taught me that it's, it's a way to swing. If you keep to that swing, you will pick the ball. Most of the time, we are, <laughs> keeping to that principle is a difficult thing. Doing things without thinking. That's what they call autopilot. Even in the issues of our lives, sometimes we don't even reflect. We just switch into control. And then the thing just take over. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 15. Bible says that the labor of fools wearies them. For they do not even know how to go to the city. The labor of the fools wearies them. So what Bible is saying here that people are laboring. They are stressed. They are hustling. He said the labor of the fools will wear them out. There's so much of that in the kingdom of God, in the church. Labor, wearing us, people, people are just doing everything. There's nothing wrong with labor, okay? There's nothing wrong. In fact, it's, it's required. But to do it without the inspiration of God will not give you a different result. The labor of the fools will wear them out. He said because they don't know how to. So that labor there is toil, is struggling, running all over the city like everyone is running. Okay, I've used that scripture before when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. That except the Lord builds, it's the labor in vain. It's the same word, the labor in vain, the toil in vain that labors. He said, it is vain for you to wake up early in the morning and run all over the city and still come back and hit the bread of sorrow. He said, I am the one that gives my beloved sleep. Wow. And then the Holy Spirit had it. He said, in their sleep, I give them the idea. Labor is to work and struggle and it does not amount to anything. You walk at, like an elephant and still come back and hit like an ant. That's labor. When the result is not commensurate to the effort that's put in. But God can change that for us. God can change that for us. So the path to success and prosperity begins with knowledge. The path to success and prosperity begins with knowledge. And I mean good knowledge. Because wealth and success flow naturally with applied knowledge. Simple. Wealth and success flow naturally with applied knowledge. The Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know, you know the grace. If you don't know the grace that he was rich yet, for your sake he became poor. If you don't know, how will you appropriate? How will you apply? Knowledge is important. The people who are doing controlling, they know something more than the rest of us. That's why they are ahead. And not just knowing applied knowledge. Applied knowledge. Some of us have not been able to hold one thing. You've not been able to do one thing. You try this. <laughs> when I finished university, I started poetry. After small poetry, I did petty trade, small petty trading. Was, pro, prof, was poetry profitable? Maybe not, because it was my dad who eventually helped me buy all the chicken. <laughs> Just to encourage me. And then after that, I, I joined the civil service. And then after that, I moved into oil and gas business. Then after that, I showed up in ministry. The only time I really sat and prayed about my life was about my marital destiny. Can you see how foolish I can be? The only time he really took time and said, <laughs> Lord, it was my marital destiny. And see what God did. That means God answered the prayer. But if it was someone that 
other aspect of my life, God will still have answered. Instead of laboring and struggling, if I told God, he would have said, go to ministry school. All the nonsense journey and the struggle would have been avoided. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? He would have said, your destiny is ministry. So there's a lot of experiments that people are experimenting. Even the company you are supposed to work for, the Holy Spirit can guide you. He can tell you when to leave, when to apply, when not to go. That's what we're saying. Whether you work with this organization or not, people are on bandwagon effect. So wealth is knowledge-based. With applied knowledge, one can create. You know, like I'm obviously telling you, we're not talking about money. See, in this my small life, I have seen a little bit about money. It's not about money. Last week I mentioned that someone lost the billions in dollars, not billions in naira. He lost the billions in dollars. And he bounced back. Why? Because of whom he had become. That's why people want them on their board. That's why people will be giving them different ideas. It's because of whom they have become. So wealth is portable. It is intangible. You cannot see wealth. It's the effect of wealth that people call wealth. Is somebody listening to me? This Naira that we, all of us are wrong about, eh? after Nigerian border, eh? you cannot spend it. You have to exchange it for another currency. So it is limited. It's only powerful here. But this is not the only place, you know, people live in. People live, so you have to convert it. But there's another currency that moves from country to country. Ah, may God give you that idea. Amen. Have you noticed that ideas are borderless? They don't have boundaries. They are intangible. You can't see them. They're borderless. Whoever started Google, started somewhere in the US, all over the world now, everybody is using it. They will have office anywhere in the world. They will sit with government. Taxify, Uber, all those powerful names, those powerful brands. You see that there's something about them. They believe that they are global citizens. But here, we would rather limit it here. We don't think that we should be borderless. It's a programming. You can start a Nigerian company and it will be all over the world. It is possible. Hmm. So idea is knowledge-based. It is intangible. It's portable. It's not a physical thing, yet it can attract the physical and then become real. The Bible says the word became, the word became flesh. The word was not tangible. It was intangible, but it became flesh. Microsoft. Microsoft was an idea that dwelt in a man called the gate. Desta was an idea, God idea, that dwells in a man called Samadiemi. Are you listening to me? So every person seated carries an idea, you an idea of something. When you show up at an interview for a job, the people who want to employ you, they are checking you out. Whether you represent the idea. If you don't represent the idea, you don't get the job. That's why they will ask you questions consistently. What they are checking is, because the day you show up there, you are an idea. Whether your idea aligns with their own, that normally happens. So from time to time, I ask this question. What can God do with an ignorant church? A docile people 
a church that is financially weak. I've been saying it. When Jesus returns, what kind of church will he meet? What kind of church will he meet? What will God do with that kind of idea? Jesus said, you will know the truth. And the truth will do what? The truth will set you free. He's saying that you will know the truth about your financial destiny. You will know the truth about your health situation. You will know the truth about your family thing. And that truth will do what? Set you free from poverty. Set you free from sickness and disease. Set you free from limitations. That was what Jesus was saying there. The knowledge of the truth brings liberty and deliverance. So we should stop trying to survive. Live from hand to mouth. I saw on one of our one of my friends, um, I saw he runs a business and consultancy. And he's saying that he's setting up a class to teach people how to, how to keep their salary till the end of the month. How to keep your salary unfinished. What English am I looking for? <laughs> so, that the, so that the salary can last you till the end of the month. And I'm saying, so now we have to teach people <laughs> how to give your salary before the end of the month. Because before the middle of the month, people are broke. Am I correct? Say the truth. <laughs> so there's a success code in the Bible on how to succeed. I have used it, it has worked. You know it, but you've not applied your heart to it. Joshua 1 8. Let's go there. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What book of the law is Bible talking about? The Bible. Okay? But it says it should not do what? It should not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way and then you will have good success. Um, Psalm 119 verse 9. The Bible says, how shall a young man make his way prosperous? The psalmist says, by taking it according to your word. How can I make my life good? How can I take my life glorious? How can I succeed? He said, by taking it according to the word of God. See, the solution is in the word of God. The solution is in the word of God. He said, the book shall not depart out of your mouth. What is Bible saying? There is no human situation that the word of God does not have solution for. There is none. Economic, financial, in fact, it's been proven that most books on leadership, on finances, on a large chunk of them emanated from the principles of the scriptures. Jesus talked about money several times. Talk about the parables, different parables about money, teaching people the principles. If we are not looking into the word to get the principle, where else should we get it from? That's my problem. Where else should we get it from? It's from the word of God. Oh my God. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Luke 10, from verse 38. Now, it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. 
verse 41, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Verse 42, can we read it together? But one thing is needed. Let's stop there. But what? For the first time, this scripture hit me differently. Only one thing is needed. Only one idea is what you need to revolutionize your life. Only one. A child of God is not even designed to have many ideas. One idea. One idea that the breath of God rests on will change the dynamics. All the other opportunities will come after you have maximized that one idea. That one idea is probably your purpose. If I knew that I should have been a pastor, even though I knew, I just didn't want one to accept. I was not just believing. One. One. Jesus said only one thing is needed. Only one. One idea that will change the revolution. You don't need all the 10 ideas, all the 20 ideas. So, so many people have experimented so many ideas. You are experimenting this. You have, that one, sit down with it. If you don't know how to get the idea, stay in the word. Pray, meditate. Bible says, Joshua 1 8, this book of the Lord shall not, med- shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate. What do you mean? What do you understand by meditation? Muttering the word, saying it loudly, repeating it, regurgitating it back and forth, going back and forth on the word of God. After a while, it becomes a rema in your spirit. It comes alive in your spirit. An idea will drop. See, it's because we don't stay there long enough. We're too busy running, even me, to pray. Sometimes your mind here, your mind, you sit down to meditate. There's no such thing as meditation. Your mind is all over the place. That's when I remember I should have sent a message to Uche. I should have done this to my wife. I should have done everything. We just to stay there for 30 minutes undisturbed, control it, your mind to receive from the Father. Experiment with it. Try it. You, if you stay there long enough, you will hear something. And when God speaks, it changes the dynamics of your life forever. Is somebody listening to me? Stop running all over the place. That's what you, it's the word is simple. You know, personally, I don't like, I don't like too many church programs. We attended one conference last week, another conference. You know some churches back to back. The one you taught them last week, they have not tried to practice it. They are open another conference, then they load them with another word. Then another one start. When are we going to use the word? There's an idea designed for you. One. One. Sit down with that idea. And then you will be amazed what God will do with it. That's it. So he said, this book shall not depart. He said, meditate. When it meditates, I mean, when you meditate continuously and it becomes your rema. Rema is the spoken word, active word of God for now that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It's not the Bible. It's God's interpretation in your spirit of the word. That is your rema. He said that you may observe to do. You don't just take meditation. You do. You do. Try it. It's not you. It's God that is leading you in that direction. And don't say you don't have the resources. See, no word of God shall be void of power. That word will attract everything that you need. Human resources, men, people, resources, positions, circumstances. That word, once it comes, will attract everything you need for the fulfillment of that word. God's word has creative ability in itself. Are you listening to me? Try it. John chapter 8, verse 47. Jesus said, he who is of God hears God's word. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So you are a business person. That's a problem you, are, you see is looking difficult to tackle. You need to be in that continuous flow to receive from God. You can spend all the money just to receive one problem. And the problem will still not be resolved despite all the money. But if the Holy Spirit gives you an idea, one, 
He will save you the headache and the money and the wahala that you have gone through because he's divinely inspired. It's somebody listening to me. That's how it works. You are a student here. God bless you. Sit down now. And the Holy Spirit can save you many years of wasted effort running all over. <laughs> a woman went and did masters in UK several years ago. She came back and be selling toast bread. Toast bread. All the 15,000 pounds. You are laughing. I'm very angry. Because that's what's happening. The Holy Spirit has saved how the necessary addict. Somebody says the qualification. It's okay. The qualification. <laughs> I don't know. Certification that is not uh, changing anything in your life. That's the thing. She came back and started selling toast bread. If she had stayed, the Holy Spirit has told her what to do. She may acquire the qualification later, but it could have saved her unnecessary headache. So there's more to you than you yourself realize. And I told you last week, can't you look around, see the problems around? We are waiting for you to provide the solution. If everybody's dodging, who will God eventually use? That's why all the money, even the politicians, <laughs> the whole money is not safe for themselves. They know that during election, we will still share. I'm sure you know, as we speak now, some people are at the house of politicians. They are eating Amala, Amala this morning. They eat um, breakfast, they eat lunch, and eat dinner there. And you and I, you are wondering why, where that one? Because we have refused to take our place. The Lord will help us. Amen. Part of the problem is we listen to God's message, and then we, we go home and forget it. Sit down with the word. Sit down with the word. See, nothing will spoil if you don't leave your house for one day. Come down. Lock down. They lock all of us down. Nothing spoiled. For how many months? Calm down. By now, we should have learned our lessons. I don't want to live my life like a headless chicken running all over the city anymore. And just one thing that the Holy Spirit will want me to do in a month, in a week, in a day, will change the dynamics of your life. You will accomplish much more than you can imagine. I will say it's the labor of the wise, of the fool, wears them out. He said, because they do not know how to go to the city. So just stop jumping from pastor to pastor, from prayer meeting to prayer meeting. Sit down and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. So what's the summary? For a child of God, understand that wealth is portable. I cannot, I cannot overemphasize that. Wealth is portable. Wealth is not the car. It's not the house. It is intangible. It's not something you see. It it's attracts those things that you eventually see. Take care of people's need and frustrations. And then they will take care of you by giving you their money. Take care of people's need and frustrations, and they would return, they will pay you back with their money. I mentioned it last week, and I'll say it again. Successful people are either professionals or entrepreneurs. You have to fall into one of the categories. My mechanic cannot be broke. Why? I always need to fix my car. And if we have 10 of them, I mean, if he has 10 of us customers, it's unlikely that at least one person will bring a car, especially with Nigerian roads. And then the more sophisticated the car is, the more skills it requires, and then the more money it can charge us. Mercedes-Benz mechanic is not anybody's mate, oh. <laughs> My pastor friend had the ML, Mercedes-Benz Jeep. 
He said, this black party is two million naira. He abandoned the car and was taking Uber. I said, spare part. When is not Tokumbo Moto? <laughs> spare part of a car, two million naira. You know that that mechanic is a senior. You have to fall into one of the categories. Be selectively extravagant and prudently frugal. Selectively extravagant. Know where to put your money. Selectively extravagant, but prudently frugal. Remember that as a child of God, you are unique. You are gifted. Even if you didn't come into this world with a gift, I saw on someone's status, they say, acquire one here <laughs> and be the best at it. He <laughs> said, you came with a gift. God made everyone with something on the inside of you. Okay, let's even say, when they are putting the stamp, they forgot in heaven. When you got here, settle down with something. Get the idea, like I've just explained. Your life will change and be transformed. Very important. Are you not tired of um, trying to... Some people, as we speak, money is not the problem. But for some people, money, for another child, 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 number of people, money is the problem. Some of these politicians who took a million, hundred million to get the form, and some of them, use, some people say they wasted their money. I'm laughing. Wasted hundred million. Some people just came and didn't even see anything. Hundred million just like that. And some people don't even get one vote. And then somebody say, ah, what would I have used that hundred million naira for? I'm saying, now poverty mindset. You can't buy one house. You can't buy Kiniko Kiniko. That, that, that cannot be your destiny. You are the God that owns the cattle upon a thousand hills. And God of heaven and earth. Uh. So you are unique. You are very creative. It's just that you haven't found it yet. That's it. You haven't found it yet. And finally, be psychologically and spiritually driven enough to want to prove the word of God in your life. Be driven to want to prove the word of God. All these things that pastor has been saying, and then the pastor, be, driv be driven to want to prove it. Spiritually, try it. Let's test the word. It, it, you can test it. It's not a sin. You can put the word of God to test and see how it works. And then you'll come back with testimonies. Bible says, prove me now. I was hoping someone got something from this message. If the church will not move, there is no hope for a nation. I've been saying it. The political class is super organized. The church needs to be organized as such. The political class, they are super organized. It's always about their interests. But the church needs to align with the principles of God's word. And don't say we are going to heaven. We are going to heaven, but before we get to heaven, we have work to do here. By the way, fall down your heads with me. Let's pray. Talk to God in this service this morning. Only one thing is needed. Only one thing. Only one thing. Only one thing. Lord, what is that thing that you want me to do? You may even be in the center of that one thing. Lord, how? That one thing I need to do to move it to the next level. You have a challenge as a business person, something you need to work on in your business or your career or in your marriage, in your family, in whatever. Lord, just that one word that will change the dynamics. One word. One word. God is depending on us. He will not do for us what he knows that we can do for ourselves. 
And Bible says that his eyes run to and fro the whole earth, looking for whom he can show himself strong on their behalf. God is not interested in timid people. That was why he kept encouraging Joshua, be courageous, be strong. You cannot be the child of the Most High God and you are timid and you are battling with esteem. Talk to God this morning. We receive courage. We receive wisdom to things to stay in your presence. We receive grace and capacity to hear from you. Haliva shanin la para va sandeli a mangro soko bo shendeli darisha. Marie pladi sindeli pratu jinandeli pradis. Lord, we thank you today. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, Father in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the power of your word. And Lord, this moment we ask that your word will buy, birth new discoveries in our heart today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that person struggling with that corner shop, let them realize today the grace that you have made available. And then Lord, let them rise today. And Lord, fulfill your purpose and your counsel for their lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that no word of God shall be void of power. I therefore declare that word has broken the hold of poverty in your life today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The word of God destroy every limitation in your life today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare that the word of God gives you victory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That debt today, the word of God helps you to pay in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That idea that the Lord has packaged for you, I declare today, it comes to you speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare, begin to receive all the resources you need for the fulfillment of that prophetic word in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, every spirit of laziness today we banish in the mighty name of Jesus. We mount up wings like ego. And Lord Jesus, we will be the doer of the words and not just the hearer alone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare we will not be deceived in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not be deceived in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for open doors this week. Thank you for open doors this week. Open doors. I declare great and effectual doors are open for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord silence all your adversaries in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Divine ideas will come to you speedily without hindrance in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will not be stranded. You will not be confused in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will always know what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare deception is far away from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will be missing in your life. Nothing will be broken in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful and marvelous Father. Ah, we receive help today. Anyone indebted, the Lord pays up your debts. He can deliver us every covenant that you've entered into that is not of God I declare they are broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I declare the victory of Christ Jesus is credited into your account you will walk in divine victory every day of your life in the name of Jesus and I declare you are far from harm you are far from wickedness you are far from evil you are far from terror in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you and your household, all our children, I declare you are preserved in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And Bible says, only good news shall be heard from the habitation of the righteous. I therefore declare only good news will hear concerning you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful and marvelous Father. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.